All right, folks. Uh, this is Scott Smone. I moved the uh, I moved the bike into the garage. This is really just to keep it out of the sunlight, especially when uh, detailing or cleaning the bike. So, just as a review, um, I bought five bottles of the engine oil. I bought four bottles of the um, uh, oil for the transmission as well as the rear drive. I have the oil filter wrench. Uh, this is also a 19 millimeter type um, uh, head on it. I got the crush rings and the, uh, the oil filter, the oil filter wrench. Everything was just shy of uh, $500. I want to say it was about $482.91 if, uh, if I recall. And so it is pretty expensive, but in terms of doing the, uh, the service uh, full boat, I want to say that's uh, that's probably maybe a six or eight hundred dollar job. I'm not really uh, sure on that. So, anyways, I'm gonna get to it. And um... hey, folks, this is Scott Simone. Uh, today, this will be part two. I'm gonna replace the air filter on my R18 Bagger. Today is a pretty rainy day, so it's a pretty good day to get in there and work on the bike. Uh, I'm just under six thousand miles. Um, Again, like I said, this will be part two of five different videos where I'm going to be covering replacing the transmission fluid, the engine oil, and the rear gear oil. So uh, in front of me, this is the airflow piece that attaches to the box. This is on the uh, right-hand side. This is the right-hand side of the upper engine cover. And then I have a new air filter. The tools uh, that I use to do this job it's going to require, you're going to need a T20, and that's going to be to replace the engine badge. You're going to need a T30, and those are two bolts on each side that are going to hold the upper engine cover. They mount vertically, and they're hidden behind the engine badge. And then on the top of the engine cover are going to be two T25 bolts that essentially grab onto the, uh, the left side of the uh, engine cover and you can see uh, they're threaded there. Uh, once you have the engine cover apart then the air box is going to re is going to require four T25 screws one or two on each side of the uh, of the bike. Um, since the uh, the airflow piece is a little malleable you have this uh, accordion type style uh, airflow that allows you to manipulate the top of the air box in order to get to the air filter. So let me go in there and just show you guys what it takes. So two T20s to remove the badge. Then there is the two T30 screws that are vertically mounted. Two screws up in the top, same thing, T25, Torx, and then the engine cover. I'm just going to lift right off. And you'll see the bottom of the uh, engine cover is actually keyed. And you'll see there's two points on the engine itself. Getting to the top of the engine, or to the top of the air box, is going to be four T25 screws. The two in the back, they're available to get right at. The two in the front is going to require manipulating that airflow piece of the air box. And again, it's an accordion style. So let's see, that just kind of pulls right out. Top of the box comes off. And then that gives you access to the air filter. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty gnarly, it's pretty dirty. So definitely uh, this is the right thing to do for your bike. And then I guess um, in, in reverse order is actually, you know, the way that you would just reassemble your bike. And it's pretty straightforward. It's going to take all of about 10 minutes or so. All right. Hope this, hope this video helped. All right, folks, so just a couple notes in reassembling the air box. So as I said, there is the T25 Torx that is exposed here in the rear of the box. 
underneath this uh, the stuck work is the other T25. What I found was install the box, four screws. I inserted the front of the ductwork in first, and then I sort of manipulated the the ductwork in order to get it to fit nicely on the top of the airbox. One of the tools that I used in order to remove the two T25 screws was uh, this little ratchet that allows me to get into a tight space, such as the uh, the example that the uh, the two screws on the back of the airbox sort of put you in. I'm going to install both engine side covers, and I'm going to do that kind of loosely at first until I get the uh, the screws that are mounted up underneath the fuel tank and that's going to be two t25s once i have those made it up then i'm going to win to cinch everything down uh, including the the two screws that mount to the lower part of the engine case and as you can see right there's two pins that allow you to line that uh, engine case up very nicely um, one of the things i've always liked about this bike is that when it's fully assembled you don't see any wires you don't see any of this mess and one of the things I've always was very impressed with with the engine case is that seam that runs along the the, the engine itself it's always very clean uh, in fact for the longest time I've actually thought it was just one piece until I actually disassembled it you can see how closely or nicely machined uh, these bikes are so I hope this helps and see you guys soon Part three, four, and five coming up.